and unique event featuring Aisha Curry, newly published author of The Seasoned Life, Food, Family, Faith, and the Joy of Eating Well, in conversation with Chef Michael Mina. My name is Linda Khoury, and I'll be your host this evening. I'm a Bay Area-born, lifelong KPFA fan, and for the last two years, I've had the privilege of being the producer of KPFA's morning show, Up Front. So previously, I worked as assistant editor to the Journal of Palestine Studies in Washington, D.C., and before that, I helped produce the Mosaic Intelligence Report at Link TV in San Francisco. I'm, I'm a podcast producer at KPFA. My podcast is called Arabiyat, and when I'm not podcasting, I'm cooking. And so growing up, I was a sous chef to my mother who taught me full Jordanian and Palestinian Arab cuisine. I would go on to marry a culinary equal, an Italian, who argues with me about which of our cultures has the best cooking. We have yet to come to a conclusion about who, is the be who has the best cooking, but in the meantime, we continue to eat like kings and queens as we try to outdo each other. Living in the Bay Area, we are blessed to have access to what seems like every single type of food imaginable, as you all know. As you have all probably noticed, the Bay Area is pretty culturally diverse, and that diversity is reflected in our culinary landscape. Not only is the variety here unmatched, our standards as Bay Area foodies are also pretty difficult to rival. It's no surprise that this region has produced some of the most innovative chefs and restaurants in the entire world. And for these reasons, I am excited to host this truly special event with two food lovers whose recipes reflect the diversity and high standards that have spoiled us, all of us living here in the Bay Area. Before we begin, I'd like to give thanks to those who made this evening possible. Thank you to the First Congregational Church who has provided us this venue for KPFA time and time again. Thank you. And thank you to all the independent bookstores who also support KPFA. Uh, Diesel Bookstore is present with us this evening and you can check them out in the back, they have a table. And of course, a big thank you to all of you in the audience. Thank you so much. <laughs> KPFA listeners are the lifeblood of this independent community powered radio station. And it is your continued support that keeps this station vibrant and full of purpose. And we all know we have a really big sense of purpose with the debates that just happened yesterday and what's coming up in November. So everybody, please support KPFA because you're not getting good news out in the mainstream media. Yeah, KPFA. So if you'd like to support KPFA tonight, please leave a donation with our volunteers at the outreach table in the outer hall. And, if you, and over there, you can also find more about KPFA and our upcoming author events, like this exciting one. So, now let's turn to what you've all been eagerly waiting for. In a few moments, we will be witness to a conversation between two culinary minds. Newly published cookbook author, Aisha Curry. They will be shedding light on topics close to all of our hearts and stomachs. Um, so, to introduce Michael now, to become a culinary giant like Michael Mina, one must have a vision and a philosophy. Michael's philosophy goes beyond food. For him, cooking is about creating relationships, relationships that last. He started his career in the kitchen at a very young age. At just 15 years old, he worked as a pantry chef at, the small, at a small French restaurant in his hometown. In 1991, he took the opportunity of a lifetime to design an upscale food restaurant in San Francisco from scratch. It was called Aqua. More than 20 years later, Aqua has been reimagined and restored to become what we know today as Michael Mina. Since then, Chef Mina has opened more than 20 destination restaurants from Hawaii to Boston to Dubai. According to Michael, the key ingredient to his many accomplishments is an unwavering passion for food combined with a commitment to impeccable service. Please join me in welcoming the distinguished restaurateur and cookbook author, Michael Mina. How's everyone doing this evening? <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much. I'm Chef Michael Mina, and um, it's uh, really it's really a pleasure for me tonight to get to be in front of you and also to get to be with um, a, a person that I know all of you came here to see today. And she's such a um, genuine and sweet person that really and truly has done something really special. And so tonight's going to be a lot of fun where we just kind of get to share a little bit of uh, um, our passions about food and a lot about what Aisha has done. So um, I would love to take the opportunity now to introduce Aisha Curry. Let's talk about uh, growing up and life. Okay. And so um, born in Charlotte, uh, I'm sorry, born, uh, Canadian born? Yes. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but I like to call myself a passionate dual citizen because I have both Canadian and American citizenship. So just putting that out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, raised in North Carolina, in Charlotte. <laughs> and now obviously where we want you, right here in the Bay Area. Yeah. So what was that like? I mean, growing up in, you know, in, in such a diverse, in so much diversity and where you... Um, yeah, you know. I think for me, um, growing up in Toronto, it was a big cultural melting pot. There were people from all different walks of life and I feel like more so with food, it really helped shape my palate and my willingness to try new things because I, I just grew up with all different sorts of people from different countries, different walks of life. In Toronto, there's a lot of people from the islands. Um, my mom is from Jamaica, so I'm Jamaican um, through my mom. Um, and so I always grew up with, with that type of food, but I feel like it really gave me like that international flair when it comes to the way that I cook. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I agree. <laughs> um, and, you know, w we talked about this a little bit in the past, but, um, you know, this career of culinary arts, it's, it's something that um, many people, you know, don't really start out doing, you know, you, um, whether it, it's a lot of times it's a so second career for people. Um, myself, it was something that, you know, was probably not that accepted in my household at a young age. Um, and then I was able to kind of, um, you know, find my way there. Um, I know with, with you, it wasn't your first career. Um, could you tell us a little bit about kind of w uh, what that was and how, what got you here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd been acting since I was two years old. Um, and so I was always on some sort of commercial set. Um, it, it was my hobby. Uh, and so like other kids were at sports, I was at an audition. Um, and that's just what I knew how to do my whole life. And so I ended up doing that. Uh, straight out of high school, became an adult and realized I didn't actually enjoy the process of what I was doing. I, I didn't enjoy um, that lifestyle and it felt like work and work is not supposed to feel like work. It's if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And so I knew that I had to make some changes um, and that was a difficult journey for me. Um, my husband can, I'm sure, agree with me. <laughs> I uh, stayed up many nights trying to figure out what the heck my path was going to be, what my next move was going to be, and it was staring me in the face my whole life. Literally, we all have to eat, right? But <laughs> I've, I've been cooking since I was a little girl um, as a hobby, and um, after I had my first daughter, Riley, realized that I wanted to turn it into a career because I loved it so much. And so I gave it a shot, uh, haven't stopped since, and now all of you guys are here staring at me. <laughs> well, we're very blessed to have you, and we're very blessed to have you in the culinary world, I can Thank tell you, you that. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> and since you mentioned, obviously, your husband and your family, and I know, you know, um, I, I told you when I picked up your book, I read it twice, I couldn't put it down, and I've read thousands of cookbooks in my life. And what I thought was really special about it is, it's always um, you know, interesting to read the title of something, and then when you actually, whether it's an article or whether it's a book, and the season life, I think, um, in the, the short, you know, in the short time that I've really 
have been able to spend with you and your family and just kind of um, understanding how much that means to you and then reading the book, um, it really was that. It was, you know, this idea of, of how do you um, take food and, you know, so many people think about how you're a home cook and how you cook at home and what that really means, but I think one of the things that you've articulated so well in the book is how you take food and actually make that part of what brings your family together, and I'd love to hear you expand a little bit on that. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really why I love it. It, it brings people together. Uh, I say no matter where you come from, who you are, what you do, what you like, the one thing we can all relate on is food. Um, and so that's how my love for that grew. I feel like it brings people together. I remember as a kid, you know, always gathering around the table at the end of the day for a meal to talk about how our day was. Sometimes the conversations were great, sometimes they weren't so great and I was getting in trouble, but it always <laughs> revolved around food. Um, and so that's why, that's just why I love it so much. It's a language of love. And so does your family help you cook? <laughs> they do, actually. Um, I learned mostly everything I know from my mom um, and my grandma. My mom's here tonight, by the way, if you didn't know that. Yeah, I feel like I, I love getting my kids involved with me. I cooked with my mom growing up, and I feel like it's the best way for me to build memories with my girls um, is by getting them involved, giving them a job when we're in the kitchen. One, because it's the only way I can get the meal done these days. They're four and one, and life gets crazy. Um, and two, I'm building memories, I'm giving them kitchen confidence, and there have actually been studies that show that if you cook with your children, they are more apt to try whatever it is that they're making. And so that's the way I've gotten my daughter to, because um, Ryan's still little, she's one, uh, but that's the way I've gotten my daughter Riley to um, try new things and experiment with food, and it's been great so far. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, I, uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm a big believer in that as well. I mean, I think that when you cook with your family and when you cook with your kids, um, it, it really does help them understand, you know, what goes into a meal and yeah. then getting the family to sit down and eat um, is, it's always a struggle, right? Yeah, and it, it doesn't have to be every single night. That's unrealistic. Um, but if you can make time for it sometimes, I feel like it can really shape the relationship with your mom or with your children, whoever it may be. Uh, but I just feel like it's, it's something that's being lost, especially um, with us millennials and, and so forth. Um, we tend to be on our phones quite a bit. And I think <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm at fault for that too. That guy's definitely at fault for that. <laughs> I, <laughs> so it's really important to uh, disconnect and I feel like the best way to do that is through sitting at the dinner table, breakfast table, lunch counter, or whatever it may be. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I know growing up that um, I, I actually, my household, my mom cooked uh, every day. And I remember certain, you know, those certain aromas that you walk in the house and, and certain, um, you know, dishes that kind of just would put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's funny because when I was reading when I was reading your book, there was one dish that your mom made oh, in the yeah. book that I was like, "Oh God, I want to eat this right now." <laughs> and and so I just uh, and I I think it's your favorite <laughs> dish. Brown you tell sugar us? chicken. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's yes, um, yes. it's my absolute favorite. Food is is nostalgic. It it reminds yeah. you of things when you eat something really, really good, you never forget that moment. You never forget where you were, what you were doing, why you were there. Um, and that's what that recipe does for me. I asked for it every single night. I um, didn't eat it every single night, but <laughs> I, um, she would make it often. And it's the first thing I ask for her to make when I go home. Um, and I've now learned how to make it myself, but I would prefer that she makes it. So... <laughs> um, and it's one of those great things, too, that you can put in Tupperware, put it in the fridge, and it just gets better as it sits. Those are the best meals. Um, and so, yeah, that's what, that is definitely my favorite. You hit the nail on the head. 
Yeah, it, uh, it, it looks so good. And I get to try it, right? <laughs> You're gonna, we're going to do a little uh, uh, tailgate party at one of the 49er games. We have the tailgate there. And Mom's going to come make the chicken, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's you know great. what? It's, it's funny because it's actually, it's, it's really cool to see how stories resonate with food and then resonate with people yeah. because it's actually the thing that I've noticed that people have been making the most. Um, yeah. via like social media I see everybody's pictures after they're done making something and that's been like the number one right so. well another thing that really caught my eye when I was going through the book was um, just actually the whimsical fun titles that you gave dishes and and it was you know it was kind of just I think it's the spirit of what's so nice about the book is just you know it's uh ridiculously simple carrots, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it, there's so many titles when you go through the book, and it's funny, because in a restaurant, that's one of the biggest struggles. Sometimes we'll make a dish, and we have to tweak or change the dish just to get the title right. And it was funny, because <laughs> so, many, so many dishes seem so natural. They just had, they sounded so good. Yeah, he's talking about the ridiculously easy carrot salad, and it's, it's ridiculously easy. <laughs> yeah, but it, I feel like people, people like that. And through the book process, I wanted to make sure that everything was approachable and seemed easy and accessible. Um, because ultimately, the book is it's not for somebody that's in the restaurant business, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's for somebody at home cooking for their family. You want it to be fast, quick, easy, simple. And so that's what, that's what I tried to, to do with the book. Um, and one thing I would like to note is that all of the pictures, the food styling, all of that in the book is all me. I cooked everything for the photographs. I, um, <laughs> thanks. <Right. laughs> so it was just me and the photographer and the occasional second set of eyes. But I wanted, I so often find, um, I'll get a home, a home chef's book um, and the, everything's perfect. And I didn't want it to be perfect because when you're cooking at home, it's not perfect. And I wanted everything to look like what it's going to look like when somebody else goes home and makes it. So there was no special, like, special sprays to make things glisten or, or anything <laughs> like that. It was just, it is what it is. Yeah, it, um, I, I agree with you. But yeah. I, I would say that one of the other things that really impressed me was, yes, I think that it was, that was exactly the philosophy behind it. But... As simple as you make the recipe sound, when you see the plating, and I, how many of you have had a chance to see the book? Great. <laughs> okay. So I'm sure all of you will agree that have seen it. When you see the plating, the plating is actually extremely, uh, it, it, it's approachable, but it has an elegance to it that I think. Thanks, Mike. No, I, I really do. I mean, and I think that that's kind of what you want to do when you're at home. Um, you know, you put all this work into making something yeah. and it takes another minute to just kind of find a way to present it in a certain way. And, it, and I think that your book helps people understand that. As simple as like the, the honey yogurt parfait, just how you put it in the bottle, uh, I mean, how you put it in the mason jar and then how you just drizzle honey over everything. Yeah. I, that, it's just those simple touches that actually, um, they, that really will make a dish come to life before you eat it. Yeah, you eat with your eyes, um, but in this case, I think we're eating with our eyes in a relatable way. <laughs> <laughs> I ramble, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, we all do. <laughs> um, and obviously the book isn't, uh, is just the beginning of what you have going on right now. You, I, I mean, I'm, I, I literally have 29 restaurants, and you're busier than I am. <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> um, so, yeah, your cooking show is yeah. going to... Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I am extremely excited about the cooking show. It's called Aisha's Homemade, and it's going to be airing on Food Network October 22nd, uh, which is right around the corner. Awesome. <laughs> I, it's, it's like one of those pinch me moments because it's something that I always dreamed of. I was 
the little girl who fell asleep in her room with a little 12 inch TV to Food Network every night and woke up to it in the morning. Um, so it's just an absolute dream come true. Um, but the show's fun and easy and approachable, just like the book. Um, we're trying to make food simple. We're trying to make food um, family friendly. So I get everybody involved from my husband to some of our close <laughs> family friends to my mom. Um, and we just have fun. They come over, I give them a job because you don't come to my house and not help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. And I hope you guys all watch it. Um, but it's one of those things. It's also a lesson for me mm -hmm. to um, keep pushing forward and to never give up. Um, because initially, you know, when I was pregnant with Ryan, we went in for a meeting um, and they came back with no. Uh, one of the reasons being because they thought I was too young and too green um, and not accessible because um, of somebody's career over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you, I love you, but um, I, we, we kept pushing forward um, and eventually they said yes. They had um, a wonderful person who worked at the network who had actually just come back off of maternity leave and she said, no, we're going to do this and you guys are going to like it. Um, she's like, I'm a mom, I can relate, um, you know, it's, it's going to be great, give her a chance and I am so grateful that she stood up for me and gave me a chance. Um, so hopefully I make them proud. Uh, I did all that I could, and so I'm really excited for everybody to see it. Yeah. Well, um, my, my, actually, Aisha was um, <laughs> kind enough to invite my wife on to do an yeah. episode. And His wife's a rock star. <laughs> she was so sassy and fun. <laughs> She's Italian, Puerto Rican, making Bloody Marys. So. <laughs> a handful. Yes. But, um, you know, it's funny because she came back and said the same thing that I, I think that, that, that the book and everything that, you know, you and your family are about. It's just, there's, a, there's just a, a humility that's just so great to see. Like, my wife's like, I walked in and I felt so comfortable. And I, from what she explained, and I haven't seen any of the episodes, obviously, yet, but... I think that that's a big part of television is getting people obviously to feel comfortable when they're watching it so they feel like, you know, they're either blown away by it and so they'll sit and watch or they actually feel like they can connect to it, right? Thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. It's funny that you say she felt comfortable because I, I'm glad I made her feel that way because I was very uncomfortable. Really? <laughs> I, yes. It was like, I'm so used to, I was so used to doing uh, the YouTube my YouTube channel, and it's just me and my little camera, sometimes my little brother helping me film. <laughs> um, so this was a whole different ball game. Um, no pun intended. There was <laughs> like, like 15 to 20 people involved. It, it, was, in, it was insanity. It was crazy. <laughs> but it was, it was a great experience. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Well, now that you said, you know, you get the family involved in cooking, yeah. I, I, I do get to tell one little story. <laughs> um, I'm nervous. I don't so, know what you're no, I, I, so uh, Aisha, when we started working together, she said, what kind of knives should I get? And I said, I, I know the perfect knives for you. <laughs> um, let me just pick them, let me pick them up and, and you'll have to tell me if you like them or not. And, uh, and then I, I was with Aisha and Stefan and Stefan told me that, you know, he had had an experience with one of the knives. <laughs> and, I, and I said, please don't ever touch one of those knives again. I don't want to be the guy in San Francisco. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, you know, that, 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 that is the joy, obviously, of having your, your family, you know, in the kitchen with you. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, please don't touch those knives. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Something that you said, when we, when we, and I, I just thought it was so great. Um, we were talking yesterday about social media, and yeah. you know, and I just, I what you said to me yesterday, I thought was so funny. I think what everybody should hear. just kind of what you think of social media and kind of how. I mean, you do such a good um, job with it; it's it's unbelievable. Um, but I, we were just talking about how social media has its good things and it has its bad things, and. You know, it's bad for obvious reasons. You get backlash a lot. Um, 
which um, I take with a grain of salt, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and the great thing about it is that I'm able to connect with all of you um, on a more personal level. And for things like No Kid Hungry, I'm, I'm very active with No Kid Hungry, and so I'm able to send that message out very easily about how other people can get involved and help, and it really does help to make a difference. And so I love it for that reason. I initially started with um, social media as a way to connect with our family. We initially moving out here were the only people on our west coast in the west coast on both sides of our family, and everybody was about as far away as they could be, either in Toronto or um, in North Carolina. Um, and so it was the perfect. If we have a really big family when we combine both sides, and so I would be sitting on the phone all day trying to update people. And so it was the easiest way for us to just get it done, say, this is what's going on, we love you. Um, and I, so, I, so I got the Instagram. Initially, I didn't realize that it was a public thing. And so I'd have like <laughs> six of the same pictures like this with like a different filter on it. And I, <laughs> I didn't know and then I'd see the likes and my cousin called me one day, um, it was Lele, she called me one day and she was like, you have um, six of the same pictures up. Is that, are you doing that on purpose? She's like, it looks really pretty, but um, you might wanna, and I was like, oh. So now I know, and now it's turned into this big, huge thing um, that I can't even manage, but I, I appreciate everybody following along. Yeah. <laughs> I told you it wasn't that funny. Okay, can we talk a little bit about food? How's that? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so, um, I, for any of you who don't know, um, you know, um, I'm sure you, you do, but I, you know, Aisha and myself got together and have had a lot of fun in um, creating this little fun pop-up in San Francisco, and it's called, yeah. Yay! <laughs> have any of you been to the pop-up? Oh, sweet! <laughs> <laughs> Did you give it a review? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know. He really did. <laughs> the best he, one ever. <laughs> he went on and gave it a review. <laughs> Everybody go look for it. You'll know when you see it, too. But, um, y you know, it was, it, it, it was such an enjoyable process because, I, I mean, I think that, you know, as getting to know somebody and then getting to know somebody in the kitchen, it's, it's, um, you, you start to see a lot of like similarities in personality of you know how people's personality kind of comes through with food people that are in the kitchen and um, I the idea behind international smoke was obviously when you look at Aisha's food and you look at her background and and the diversity and then um, this idea of really having having a lot of fun with um, you know things that maybe are classic, like classic barbecue, but kind of turning it on its side and looking at what the whole globe has to offer, whether it's, you know, um, Jamaican or, or it's Chinese barbecue or it's um, Japanese. Everybody has a different way of grilling and barbecuing and then just kind of having some fun with the food. I know the book now and I know that, I know because I did a cookbook and you, you hear a book a certain way because that's what you want. You want everybody to be able to experience and be part of it. But seeing what you do in the kitchen, I'd, you know, and just understanding now the flavor profiles of like this bold and balanced food, I think has really been fun. And if any of you have had a chance to, to eat there or um, have a chance, I mean, it, it, it's a very different experience of Aisha's food, I think, than a little, you know, it's definitely different than the book, yeah, but absolutely. still the same philosophies. And if you touch on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Michael's really awesome because he went out on a limb and gave me a chance. Um, I'm, I did not go to culinary school, um, but I think if I can speak for you, you saw that yeah. I was very passionate about what I, what I do and what I love so much. Um, and so it all started um, back around the Super Bowl last year. Yes. Um, I met Michael a couple <laughs> months before that um, at his restaurant, Michael Mina in the city. Um, and we hit it off right away. I started picking his brain, and at the end of the conversation, I, we, we looked at each other and he said, he, he, for these tailgates, I'm stuttering, I don't know why. <laughs> for these tailgates, he always has 
um, a chef come in from whatever city is, is playing that's from the away team. Um, is it away team in football? Yes. Okay, from the away <laughs> team. So, <laughs> so there was a chance of the Carolina Panthers making it. And so I said, if the, if the Carolina Panthers make it, can I cook with you? And he said, yes. And they made it, and he kept his word. And so I went and enjoyed the tailgate with him and got in the kitchen. I got, it was my first time really being in a commercial kitchen, and I got to tell you, uh, <laughs> cooking for a restaurant and cooking at home are two totally different things. I have the biggest appreciation for what you do, um, and it's, it's just it's so different. Um, but I stayed in the kitchen the whole time. Yep. Um, even though he tried to get me to <laughs> go out, I, I wanted to be there. Um, and at the end of all, at the end of it all, he said, "You know, we really need to do something together." And so it took a while, um, yeah. but you came to me with international smoke because you thought that it fit really well, um, and it did. And you know, we both love our families so much. Um, and so, how do you bring family and food together? Mm -hmm. It's like, what's more family than a barbecue? Right. And so, um, International Smoke was born, yep. and yeah. um, it's been doing great. It's been rocking and rolling ever since. Jesus, um, uh, yeah. Um, we've it, it's in our test kitchen, so we do concepts every yeah. three months. And International Smoke has been not not just the most successful concept, but probably the most successful concept threefold. I mean, wow. we, I think we sold out. Uh, the, we sold out the first two months in 15 minutes. So yeah. Pretty successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I, I love being there at the test kitchen and getting in the kitchen whenever I can. Um, I've gotten really busy lately, so I haven't gotten to be there as much as I would like. Uh, um, but yeah, it's the lighter side of barbecue. It's very innovative. Um, we have something called a Thai barbecue shrimp chili. And it's not a chili at all, but the textures embody a chili, um, and you just have that Thai influence in there, and it's delicious, and we pair it with this amazing cornbread, and people can't get enough. It's definitely the favorite of the restaurant. But I love it so much because it is international. Um, my mom is Jamaican and Chinese, yep. and my dad is Polish and African-American, so I'm pretty mixed up. My nickname in high school was the UN. So... <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I, I just, it's the perfect fit for me and I just enjoy it so much and to see people's faces when they're trying all of the different things, no, not, no one thing is like the other at this place. It's, everything's different, it's unique, it has its own, its own flair um, and each dish I think speaks for itself, which I love. Yeah, and we use very seasonal ingredients, right? Yes, absolutely. And how do we pick the seasons? <laughs> <laughs> So this, <laughs> does, this, this technique doesn't work for me um, because I only know about one sport and when one sport happens. But he remembers when certain uh, fruits and veggies are in season by which sports are in season. Yeah. So you know, you like, say, yeah. What did you it's, say? Well, Basketball well, no. is pumpkin. Yeah, you got pumpkin which, squash. Which makes sense, yeah. orange, orange. Uh, yeah. But when is corn season? Uh, baseball. <laughs> so... For you sports fans out there, you can uh, quickly learn what fruits and veggies are in season. <laughs> um, so, obviously, uh, in this, you know, uh, over these last few years, um, it, it, it's been, you know, it's obviously is great to hit these milestones, right? Um, you know, this, it, for me, I was always like, I, I watched, you know, I watched your, I, I actually watched your YouTube show, <laughs> which was so fun. That's and, awesome. And, and so relaxed. For me, television, you know, always uh, was exhausting. Mm -hmm. Like, when I would be on television, you know, when I would do something for an hour or two hours on TV, I would be more exhausted than I would be if I spent 20 hours in the kitchen. But with you, it's so natural. It's just, it's, uh, it looks, it, you make it look easy. You make it look really easy. And, um, and so I think that, you know, it's, it's, I think what's interesting is, you know, as you move forward and you balance this career, you know, do you, do you have any visions of where you see, you know, which direction you see yourself in a few years or yeah. down the road or? Yeah, I think, um, and I hope this comes out right, but I feel like, uh, God works in mysterious ways, and um, 
I feel like he knows your path better than you're ever going to know it. You never know where you're going, but I, for me, my faith is everything. Um, and I spent many, many nights praying about what direction to go in. Um, and God definitely directed my path for me, and it's been wonderful. But I feel like with all of the cooking for television and um, all of that great stuff, um, I feel like my acting background has helped me feel comfortable. And so I feel like those years that I spent like working towards a career that didn't happen is not lost. Um, I was able to use that for, um, for something different, something for me better, and something that I absolutely love doing. And so I feel very blessed um, to have had the journey that I've had. And I feel like for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm in the right place. Um, and it's, it's a really good feeling. <laughs> But uh, for the, thanks, yeah. guys. <laughs> but for the, for the future, okay. So for my goal for the year of 2016, <laughs> <laughs> I really, really want to make the uh, New York Times bestsellers list. Hit, hit. Yeah. <laughs> so, You're going to be there. I, I like I don't keep secrets. I'm about being transparent, so it is what it is. I that's my goal for this year, and I find out tomorrow if I yeah. achieve that goal. I'm very nervous. So if it doesn't happen, feel free to send Kleenex to. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but uh, overall, for the future, I just want to be able to balance my home life. M mommyhood and my work life well. It's something that I'm trying to figure out. It's something that I struggle with. I like have this insane amount of mom guilt um, with how busy I've gotten. But one thing that I've learned is like quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. And so while I might not be there every second of every day, um, when I am there, I try my best to make sure that it's quality time um, and that I'm disconnected as much as I can be. Because I think those are the memories that they're gonna have when they get older. Um, and so just that, trying to balance, trying to balance it all. Um, I'm getting better every day, though. Prayer helps with that. Um, deep breaths. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, it does, actually. Um, um, it and does. Just, yeah. And I guess that this, I hope the show is successful. Um, and I, I just hope I keep listening to God and making sure that I'm not listening to myself um, and that I'm making decisions, um, making the decisions that, he wants me to make and not not what I want in the moment. Um, that's that's been the yeah. that, that's my goal. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right. That's yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, so. Um, one of the um, <laughs> one of the questions that I think people um, when people are cooking at home often they will go to the same dish because you know it's it, it, you know it's kind of your go-to right and you know yeah. where all the pots and pans are mm -hmm. for that particular dish you know you know where to grab this pot out of the counter you, you you're very you feel very confident when you make this one dish right. Is there any dish in the book or that you've done that you would say would be your go-to dish at home that, like, you know, if, uh, for whatever reason, whatever that special thing is, this is the dish you make? Yeah, I, um, we're all creatures of habit, so sure. <laughs> we all tend to do that. But I, um, I would say, you know, Stefan has 41 games at home, and so I'm making a lot of pasta. And so <laughs> the game day pasta sauce is something that I know off the top of my head. Um, and another thing would be the apricot glazed salmon. It's so easy. Oh. It's three ingredients um, for, the, for the glaze. It's, it's so simple. It's squash, zucchini, nice piece of fish, soy, gar soy garlic, um, apricot, jam, mix it up, pour it on the fish. It's, it's like, it's the easiest thing in the world. And so <laughs> that's my go-to um, on a weeknight when things are hectic. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the dishes that, that's in the book that I, that 
I, 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 well, I, um, I love the name of it, but also, um, you know, kind of the simplicity, but again, it's actually very similar to exactly how we would cook a steak in a restaurant is, is your minute steak. Is, pan steak. Yeah, yeah. pan steaks, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I feel like it's something so simple, but a lot of people might not think to do that at home. Right. And so that's why I wanted to put it in there. Um, but it's a really worry-free recipe. Um, and I love cast iron so much. I love that you can have it for your whole life and that the pan just gets better with time. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, and I say so yeah <laughs> at the end of my sentences a lot. <laughs> this is a good learning experience for me. <laughs> and so backyard cooking. What's yeah. the, what's the go-to outdoors? Hmm. You know, he mans the grill. I leave that for him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a fan of um, ahi tuna. Uh -huh. And so there's a great uh, tuna recipe in there. It has mangoes and jalapenos, and it's so fresh. I love that in the summer. So I make that outside sometimes. Um, and it's great. Yeah. Yeah, great. You know, it's funny because obviously grilling fish is something that people get pretty nervous about, right? Yeah. And, um, and you know, I just whenever you're doing it, it's, you know, nine times out of ten, the problem that you have is just the grill's not hot enough, yeah. right? If you get the grill really hot, people get scared of it a little bit, but that's what we're And don't, don't move it. The fish will he's tell the you man. when to you guys, you guys know, no, he's the man. <laughs> right? Everything that comes out of his mouth, I, I'd write it down. I wish I had a pen and paper right now. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we, <laughs> we're going to open this up now to some oh, yay. questions that we have here. Um, that we've written don't down. stump me. <laughs> so we will. Uh, Is that what we're doing? Yes. Are we, we getting questions? No, I think we have a list of questions right now okay. that we're open up. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <That's> great. <clears throat> what was the dish that you made that made you fall in love with cooking? Oh, you know what? There's not one dish. Um, it's a moment that I remember, um, and it's my 13th birthday party. Um, my, my parents asked me what I wanted to do for my birthday, and I told them I wanted to cook. And they were like, okay. You don't want to go, like, do laser tag or go to Woody Woodchucks? It's the, you, you guys don't even know. It's, this, it's like Chuck E. Cheese in Canada um, for my 13th birthday. But you did offer that up. But the tubes are giant, and like grown-ups can get in them. It's amazing. I think it's closed down now for reasons I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but I told them I wanted to cook, and they were so nice to go to Sam's Club, which is like Costco, um, and get me everything you could think of. I invited like eight or nine friends over, I think, and we literally just cooked the day away. Um, it was you know what, we were chopped way before it's time. That's basically <laughs> what it was like, because everything was on the counter, um, and we had to figure out what to make. No recipes, uh, nothing like that, just mm -hmm. all experimentation. And it was the first time they really gave me the freedom to do what I wanted in the kitchen without supervision, and it felt amazing. Um, and I'll never forget it. I feel like I'm a grown woman, and I always talk about my 13th birthday, like it happened yesterday. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> I just, I loved it. I can't thank them enough because it's really where I feel like my passion just grew for food. That's great. <laughs> um, okay. I'm a mom that doesn't like to cook. You are? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless my wife tells me I am. <laughs> Good man. Uh, uh, but I have a daughter who does. Any suggestions? to keep her on the path? <laughs> I would say, so she said she's a mom who doesn't like to cook, yes. but her daughter loves to cook. Yes. So for that, I would say you just have to, this is gonna sound very harsh, but I would say, I would say suck it up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you don't like to cook, I feel like if she loves to do it, there's your moment, especially 
yell out if she's a teenager. Is the daughter a teenager? Yes. yes. All right. So, so I would suck it up because there's your, there is your moment to bond with your daughter. I feel like you can create so many memories in the kitchen. Um, it, it's the perfect place to like open the lines of communication, um, share something special together that your daughter can't really share with anybody else. And who knows if she loves it so much, maybe you'll even learn a thing or two from her. But I think you'll look back and be happy that you sucked it up and <laughs> got in the kitchen with her. So that, that would be my advice. Just to do it. Just do it. Go for it. Um, try new things. Experiment with her. I, th I, think, I think you might end up loving it. Yeah. Be your prep cook. Yeah. Be your prep cook. Or, pick, pick or <laughs> I have a better idea. Father, forgive me. But you can sit next to her with a glass of wine and watch her cook, too. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I or like juice. that idea better. <laughs> Whichever you prefer. <laughs> What's your favorite comfort food? Oh, my mom's brown sugar chicken. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so overindulgent. I cannot get enough of it. It's it, it warms me up. I think it's nostalgic. It reminds me of my childhood. So that's that's what makes it comforting to me. But I love, like, fall and winter are my favorite seasons. I love comfy, comfy. I love comfort food. I love things that make you warm. Um, I love things that take hours um, in the oven or on the stove top. Um, and I love like lighting a fire and like eating a nice bowl of stew and being able to wear leggings if I put on a couple of pounds. It's like, it's just the best time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I was. I thought you were gonna say it was that egg, that egg dish that Stefan made you. <laughs> oh, about that. I will. Okay. Again, I love you. I will um, make a. Is it disclaimer? I will disclose this information before I tell this story. He has gotten better, which is the most important. Improvement is key. Yep. Um, but um, he once made me breakfast. And is this what we're talking about? Did I pick yeah. the right thing? Or were you talking about my faux pas? No, no. I was <laughs> oh, okay, good. We'll get to that after. I, um, he, he caught himself making me breakfast, and he worked really, really hard at it. And it, when it was presented to me, it was some cream of wheat, a burnt bagel, <laughs> crispy eggs, and the beautiful plate was aligned with a garnish of gushers. Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> yeah. College. It was college. He, he gets a pass. It was college. And I love gushers. But I took a bite of that. A bite. It wasn't even a bite. I took a spoonful of that cream of wheat. And it was like the... Atlantic Ocean <laughs> was in my mouth. It was disgusting. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I, and to this day, he will not admit that his cream of wheat was salty. He's like, I, that's the best thing I make. I'm really good at it. <laughs> um, but it wasn't so good. But needless to say, he does have a dish in, the, in, the, in, uh, in his back pocket. <laughs> that he whips out every now and then, and that is his five ingredient pasta, and he yeah. does it well. Um, so I know if I'm ever, ever sick or gone or missing, that's what my kids are getting to eat. <laughs> but it is delicious, it's, it is delicious. It's comforting because he makes it and he does it well. Um, he's gotten better. And since, the books come, whoa. and since the books come out, he's actually cooked three times for me. Yeah. Yes, this is, this is like record breaking, but I said he does everything in three, so that's probably the end of it. Oh, that's Prove me <laughs> wrong. <laughs> well, I'm sure he cooks 100 times better than I could play basketball against this. <laughs> what food did you crave when you were pregnant? Oh, ooh, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a terrible person, and you're going to be like, she cooks for a living? <laughs> oh, no. I had two-week stints, um, and this was with my first pregnancy. I couldn't eat very much. I couldn't keep much down. Um, and so I had two weeks of Lucky Charms cravings. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> two weeks of Burger King original chicken sandwich cravings, <laughs> and the rest of the time it was like fruits, right? It was like, what? Come on, like leave that. He said donuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's this place in the city, at the time we were, uh, we were living in the city, um, and there was this place called Bob's Donuts. So after games late night, I'd be like, I really want a donut. And so he'd take, it was 24 hours, he'd take me to Bob's and get me a donut. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> What's your favorite tool to use in the kitchen? Oh, you know what? Um, Actually, Amanda Haas put me on to this, and it's using a, spa a fish spatula for everything. Yep. It yep. flips pancakes Outback. wonderfully. Yep. It, yep. it does everything great, and it's meant to be for fish, but it works wonders for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And yeah. so I, I love my fish spatula. Yeah, you know, you can use it to whip eggs. It's great. Like, it's a, like a wick, too. Yes. Seriously. I told you. you write it down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> how does your faith play a role in your life um, as a wife, as a mom, and as an author? Um, it's everything. My faith is everything. Um, it's, uh, it's literally everything. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. We wouldn't, I don't think either of us would um, be doing what we're doing if, if we didn't put God first. Um, it's what keeps us grounded. It's what helps us make good decisions. Um, I mean, uh, nobody's perfect, but our whole way of living is to live for God and um, shine his light on everybody. That's, uh, that's how I started my blog. It was, it was initially Little Lights of Mine, mm -hmm. um, and I did it to just kind of be a witness for God and to just, and not through like, pushing it on people. I want it to live in a way that people would say, oh, she seems like a nice person. I wonder why that is. And hope that they saw the light, um, that I was sh shining God's light. And that's kind of been um, my mission since I started on this new career journey. Um, um, I think it's the reason why we have a good relationship and, and why we're still married. Um, it's not the only, I mean, it's the foundation of why we're married, but it's not the only reason why we're still married. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but we just try, you know, it's, it's funny because you can be raised a certain way, um, but at some point you have to make your own decision and say, yeah. this is how I'm going to live my life. And um, I've been fortunate to have him as the head of my household um, living for God and um, I do the same and we hope that we can instill that in our girls, but it really is everything. It's, it's how we make decisions. It's, it's everything we do and we're not perfect, um, but we just try to live each day being just a good person. That's what it's all about. Just trying to be a good, honest person. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. First, you rock. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I thought it was going to be like, then you roll. That was a good follow-up. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, have you tried cooking food outside of your heritage, and is there a specific international dish um, that you like? Um, see... It's so funny because my favorite thing in the world is like greasy spoon, like hole in the wall, take out Chinese food places. But I am, I am a quarter <laughs> Chinese, so I don't know if that counts. I don't know if that's out of my comfort zone. Um, mm, that's a great question, Michael. I, um, well, I love Japanese food. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I've never, I've never, um, tried making anything. I feel like one dish in my book is kind of representative of um, like Japanese. It's the it's the um, the filet and mushrooms mm -hmm. in the with the soy, soy and the miso. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I feel like that's a little that's got a little influence. But yeah. I um, 
It actually really does, because like the beauty yeah. of Japanese food is, like, is always that, you know, it, it seems really simple. It's usually a few ingredients, but the ingredients are always perfect. The technique is always perfect. I think that dish is like, it's, yeah. it's a few ingredients, but it's, you yeah. know, they all go together really well. Yeah, I have a friend um, that lives in Latvia, and she, um, she made me some Latvian food one time. And it was delicious. It was. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> you good? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but she made me these amazing beef rolls, and it had like whole cloves of garlic in each roll, and it was delicious. Um, so I love I loved stepping outside of my comfort zone. Um, but it is, I have a rule. Like, I will try anything once when it comes to food. Um, so, yeah. I'm open. I'm open to trying new things. <laughs> well, that's a good segue into yeah. the next question here. Oh, good. Okay. Um, is there anything you don't eat, and what is your least favorite food? See. And I just oh, found out man. about nuts. I, so. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but I still love them. Okay. I still eat them. I just have to pay for it after. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, and he's not going to like my answer, but again, like, transparency, <laughs> so I'm going to be honest. I, I don't. I don't like foie. I know. There's yeah, foie gras. Uni, I don't, right? <laughs> I don't like foie gras. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to explain what foie is to them? Or do you not want to explain it? It's better not to explain it. Um, <laughs> let's skip it. <laughs> okay, we'll skip it. And then uni. I, I don't like uni. Why'd you sit back? You don't, do you like uni? You, never mind. So I, <laughs> I, um, I, uh, I don't, I'm a, I think I'm a texture person, and foie gras and uni are two very textural yeah. Food, yeah. foods, so I don't, yeah. Other than that, go. I'll try it. Oh, mm -hmm. what was it? Snails. Yeah. yeah but he yeah. tricked me into eating, um, what was it? Was it? Yeah, I tricked you into eating uni, actually. You did? When? Yeah. It was in a custard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, apparently I like uni in a cus <laughs> in custard form. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for doing that. It was with corn. It was, it was baseball season. Aisha, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, I am married to bacon. <laughs> I'm like not into the whole multiple marriages thing, but if I could marry bacon, I, I think I might. If you were okay, I think you'd be okay with that though, so. <laughs> That's great. So I think you might have just answered it. They oh, great. Know what food you'd be married to. <laughs> oh, definitely bacon. I love it so much. Um, okay, let's go from there <laughs> to what is your favorite healthy recipe? <laughs> My favorite healthy recipe. You know what? I love, um, see, I feel like salad. Bacon, right? <laughs> bacon. It's healthy. No, it's not. Um, I feel like salad Some. For a long time, salads intimidated me. Um, and I feel like I can say the same for them too. Um, certain parts of the states, like salads, we're, we're very lucky with our salads here in the Bay Area. Um, I, I like fell in love with yep. a good salad when I Absolutely. moved here. We are so lucky to have local fresh ingredients, yeah. farms like in our backyard, um, just with the yeah. most beautiful produce and so, I've fallen in love with like very vegetable filled salads um, sure. and then a nice light dressing. I feel mm -hmm. like it doesn't get any better. Avocado, mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky here with avocado. You go to New York and um, my manager Danielle always tells me this story. She's like, I go to New York and there's the menu option like add avocado for 50. And she's like, <laughs> yes, I'll take the avocado. And it's like two little thin <laughs> slices of like hamachi avocado. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like nothing. Yeah. And it's a little brown. We're, <laughs> we're, we're pretty blessed here, you guys. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, okay. <clears throat> will you still make your cooking videos on YouTube? I will. I, um, I'll do little tidbits here and there. Um, it's so funny. It's like one of those life comes at you fast moments. Um, and you never want to... Um, like forget where you started. So I'm definitely gonna keep um, putting up YouTube videos after all of this settles down. Um, 
and my kids are taken care of, I will definitely um, start creating content. I'm more of a, a pastry girl. I love cookies and cakes, and it, and it shows, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he, this guy over here, he's the, he's the junk food candy guy. He loves um, like Sour Patch Kids and um, like what, what is it called? Uh, Starburst and Skittles and all that stuff. <laughs> This is not a sponsored show. <laughs> I, he just really loves them. But you didn't hear from me. Um, with a busy schedule now, um, how do you manage to get dinner on the table with two little ones, and do you have any tips for a new mom? Yeah, I, I feel like life's all about balance, and in all honesty, sometimes dinner gets on the table, and sometimes it doesn't, and we have to get takeout. Um, but it's all about, or sometimes you're so nice as to send me <laughs> care packages um, right to my doorstep, which is so nice. Uh, but days, days can get away from you really quickly. Um, but when I do have the time, I love a good 15-minute meal, and the book has a lot of that in there. And the way that we get it done when, when we have a busy day is by involving the kids. Um, Stefan will, will take our youngest and and make sure she's good, and I'll get Riley on the countertop with me with her feet on the counter, because I'm okay with that, as long as her feet are clean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of backlash for that one time on social media. Did you? Yeah. Aww. And she was like two at the time, too. So I was like, oh, whatever. on your show. Oh, yeah. No, no. It was a picture. But uh, that's yep. another story. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'll get her up on the counter and give her a job, and then dinner's done, and we're able to enjoy it. Sometimes it's a little later than we'd hope for, but we try our best, and I feel like that's what it's all about. It's about like putting forth some sort of effort to try and get it done as often as you can. Um, so that would be my, my best advice. Um, mm -hmm. Meal prep is big, too. I, I'm actually going out of town again tomorrow, and so I had a spare hour today, and so I just threw a bunch of stuff on a baking sheet, veggies. Um, I did kids' chicken tenders, the whole thing, and I just put them in the oven, kind of that set it and forget it type thing. Um, and 30 minutes later, it was all done. So I made sure that they at least had, whether it's for her school lunch or whatever, they have some sort of home cooked something. And so meal prep is big for me. Um, I like doing things ahead of time. That's great. I like that title, set it and forget it. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, any other questions? Yes. Really? Oh, so she likes the juice of the fruit. So why don't, my advice for that, because I never had, um, that, that, that didn't happen to me, but one thing that comes to mind, maybe you could do smoothies um, and puree or blend the fruits and create some sort of smoothie do like coconut water in there to thin it out. And since she loves the fruit juice so much, that might be a good way to get it in her. Yeah, have you ever tried that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thin, thin it out. Add, add either coconut water, coconut milk, regular water, a little orange juice, and thin it out so that, she's, is she still using a bottle? Yeah, I'm still, I'm there too. Um, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. They'll forget about it eventually. But put oh. it in the bottle and um, use a knife to make the hole a little bit bigger and see if she'll, see if she'll um, do it that way. Yeah, I hope that helps. It's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, thank right. you. I got a great one here for okay. you. Okay. Um, date night. <laughs> what, what would you prepare? First, Stefan, and what wine? <laughs> and what wine? Yeah. <laughs> um, goodness. See, because this is a tough one, because date nights for us now with two kids um, is the kids going to bed on time, and then we always anticipate having a date night, but we end up in bed watching HGTV. So... Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but in a dream world, right. <laughs> um, there's a recipe for lamb chops mm -hmm. in the book, and we love that. We actually, I actually make that when we have a special occasion, so I guess that, that's the same type of thing, but I do balsamic lamb chops, we do a little bacon wrapped scallop, some rice, um, asparagus, super simple, quick and easy. And wine, we're a, we're a cab family. We love good, full-bodied Cabernets. Um, so I said Cabernets, really weird. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Cabernet. Cabernet. Yeah. Um, but in, yeah, a, in a cave. In a cave. In a cave. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, that's what that's our wine of choice. Good that's cab. Great. Did I get it right? No. Good. Okay. okay. Um, well, obviously, um, this is the the book is off to you know I I, I would say a. You know, I will say a running start. It's, uh, and tomorrow, I'm sure, is going to be great news. And we'll, we'll all, I know, it, it will be. Um, t today was, you know, again, I'm th I want to be the first one to thank everybody um, for, you know, obviously this is something that's really special. It's special for all of us. It's special for me to get to sit up here and, and be part of this. And, um, r I, you know, the, the one thing I would say is please, anybody who, you know, um, has a moment of free time whenever you're at home and if you are nervous or anything about cooking, everybody is. The more you cook at home, the more you spend time in the kitchen, the more you, you know, take this type of inspiration. It really, there's, there's so many rewards that you get out of it. Um, I think that, you know, it, it really can help you clear your head in many ways. It's nerve-wracking, but there's a lot of fulfillment that you get out of it. Um, Aisha, thank you so much for letting me be up here with you. Thank and you. For spending time with everybody. Thank uh, you. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Um, well, thank you, Michael, um, for supporting me um, and backing me. It's, it's a dream. Um, and thank you all for being here. When I started this, I could have never imagined that you guys would all be sitting here in front of me, staring at me, um, <laughs> listening to me ramble. So I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it, and thank you all so much. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.